So guys, for the first time ever, we have a winning streak to talk about on Men in Stripes brought to you by StripeHype.com, a fan side exclusive. Because if you do win two in a row, that means that you're on a winning streak. And holy moly, guys, the Bengals have won two in a row. And we're going to go ahead and talk about this today. Tim Daniel, as always, with an excellent crew. Matt Wilson, Shelby Dermer. Gentlemen, how we doing? Hey, two-game winning streak, and don't care if it was just Cleveland. Still feels really good to finally get some Ws. Maybe uh, it was maybe it was about eight days ago, Shelby. You should have wrote the uh, we'll start start the four game winning streak then. <laughs> <laughs> well, they need a five game win streak to make it. I'm pretty sure. But hey, neither here, neither there. <laughs> the Bengals go to Cleveland and take care of business as usual with a big victory. Um, Jeremy Hill has a nice game as always against the Browns, like we all said he would. The Red Rifle may have only thrown for 187 passing yards, but man, was he crisp and he was on point. Tyler Eifert doing Tyler Eifert things. Um, Robert Griffin III is terrible. He is not good at football, people. Let's just go ahead and put it that way. Um, that well, Hugh, Hugh Jackson makes some bad, 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 bad calls. It throws a flea flicker at the one-yard line. Um, Mike Nugent's still not good at this whole thing where he yeah. kicks the ball into the goalposts and it's supposed to go through them. Sometimes he just kicks line drives at people he wants to hit in the nuts, I'm pretty sure, like at that extra point that was uh, missed yesterday. So, overall, Shelby, uh, man, who stood out to you from yesterday's victory against the Brownies? I think he uh, froze. He did. He, he did, did freeze. Uh-oh. All right, so yeah. Matt, what see, we looked too. Yeah, so, oh, that's that's not a good noise. That means uh, Shelby dropped out. So we're gonna get him on here in just a minute. You can keep talking. Um, so I'll take over for Shelby. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, uh, no, I mean, first off, Ken Zampi's stood out because he actually used Tyler Boyd how you can use Tyler Boyd, and that's running the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, 39-yard run by, by uh, Tyler Boyd on an end around. Uh, great play, great draw. Uh, helped set up Tyler Eifert's first touchdown pass, um, essentially, where they went down the field and uh, and scored. And, and, of course, Eifert, we've been waiting for a multi-touchdown game from him. Uh, and, and he performed well. I mean, he, he finally – a, a huge impact uh, in, in a winning effort. I mean, he did great last week, but at the same time, you know, it, it, this is this is what we come to expect from from Tyler Eifert for sure. So uh, we got Shelby back. Uh, so uh, I thought, and I thought I was going to have problems at the, at the firehouse with Wi-Fi. So, <laughs> but um, no comment. The, the <laughs> offense was was finally firing on all cylinders and. and in all reality, Andy Dalton really didn't need to do much. So, so Shelby, man, first off, welcome back. We're excited to have you. Hey. Uh, <laughs> second off, you all uh, seem to disagree with my Robert Griffin the third is terrible comments, but like, come on, bro, he wasn't good. I get well, he was out a while. No, he was. Yeah, he was terrible. But you know, you're in the snow. You're, you don't have much of a cast to work with. I I don't I mean I don't know. The Bengals defense have been playing well. But, you know, he didn't do himself any favors. Some of it he you know, a, a lot of his throws weren't even close too. No. A lot of the times you saw Drake and Patrick like backing up and <laughs> just not even playing the ball because it was already thrown out of bounds. Well that but, and that wasn't uh, that wasn't Robert Griffin's the third fault. That was Terrell Pryor. Just ask Adam Jones. <laughs> yeah, true. I loved all of that, by the way. I'm not even gonna lie but, to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Paul Gunther didn't like it. I know. But uh, this show doesn't seem to like Paul Gunther a lot of the time. <laughs> but look, looking at one person in specific. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, the Bengals' defense played really well, but, you know, a lot of that was RG3 shaking off the rust in a game where, you know, the temperatures really played a factor. But he did have the benefit of a run game, but he just he could not find anything through the air. Oh, that reminds me with cold temperatures, Tim. The play gate. Take two. 
<laughs> so you're the one that said you can't. You came on. You came on. Uh oh. We were done with the play gate. Yeah, it's never going away, man. It's never going away. Would I be surprised if the Steelers got busted with it, though? Not a bit. But hey, time and a place to talk about that. Um. I was, uh, I'll go ahead and say that I was very happy with their performance yesterday. Uh, minus the offensive line. Kind of me shocked. Um, giving up four sacks. Dalton has another sack fumble. Thank God we recovered it. Um, I liked what Tyler Boyd was doing, becoming very reliable, as always. And Andy Dalton's figured it out with these guys, man, without A.J. Green. Like, he's, uh, he's got it cooking, man. He's, 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 he's figuring things out how to get these guys going and building that trust. Yeah, and I think I saw the graphic, CBS put it up. It was Tyler Boyd, maybe first or second among rookies in third down catches. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's coming up big, and, and, and I, I read something from the Dayton Daily News today, and it was that Tyler Boyd and these these young receivers, you know, with Alex Erickson coming, back, or coming up big in the return game and sometimes in the receiving game. Uh, James Wright's made some plays. I know he was inactive. Cody Core had the big game against Philly. You know, the emergence of these young receivers has been the bright spot of what's been a, a bad season mm-hmm. record-wise. So, did you guys see that stat? Um, I'm sorry, Matt, I didn't mean to talk over you. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and the funny thing is, is we've also seen a little bit of uh, veteran presence from Brandon LaFell, who, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we, we were hoping to see a little bit of that earlier on in the season, but... Uh, any which way, when, when you get a veteran in there to help kind of bring your young guys along, it, it's always a good thing. And, I mean, A.J. Green's doing his thing while Brandon LaFell is behind the scenes with the rookies and the young talent. Uh, bringing them along and, and properly without dropping the ball. Yeah. So, did you guys see that stat that CBS posted yesterday that Andy Dalton in games where the Bengals score 23 or more points is 33-1-2? and two? Hold on, I'm trying to think of when they were, when they lost, when they scored 23 or more, 23 or more points. Yeah, yeah. they had more ties than losses 20. in the Dalton era when they scored that many points. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Carolina. Was it? Was it? I'm guessing it was. It had to be a shootout, and you can do the similar stat with. Is, you can do a similar stat when the defense allows less than 17 or so. Yeah. And when oh, Geno yeah. Atkins takes advantage of very poor, poor setters that are in front of him. Ooh. Poor kid yesterday. <laughs> had, Car- Carlos yeah. Dancy looked like he was out for, for some vengeance <laughs> yesterday, too. I yeah. Know. I mean, it, it got a little old, though, because he was tackling Isaiah Crowell after, like, eight yards and then, like, Waving his finger. He was Terrell on, Suggsing it. Two. Yeah, he was definitely Terrell Suggsing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. He d- he doesn't have much time left in the NFL, so I'll let him have it. Yeah. So, guys, it moves us forward. Um, the new big news coming out today from Marvin Lewis is obviously they're expecting on Wednesday that Adriel Jeremiah Green will be practicing. As Marvin Lewis put it, it is partly sunny. It's the forecast on AJ Green this week. So, my main question for you guys, Matt, we'll start with you. Do you play him? Yes, you play him. Do you use him as a decoy, or do you use him for your full-fledged game plan? You know, I think I think it's too early to tell because, of course, we're doing this on a Monday instead of a normal Thursday. Uh, and so, um, first off, you got to get him in practice, see where he's at, see is he is he is he cutting like he should? Is he uh, making double moves like he should is he is he, does he have full motion uh, and is he game ready um, that's first and foremost what you really have to focus on because if he's suffering any setbacks especially at full speed because he hasn't done that yet uh, he's been more on the practice field and everything that way uh, off to the side for the rehab field uh, so so there's still some stuff that's yet to be seen whether or not you really can say that he's a veteran, one wide receiver, I think you have to stick him in there. 
Um, whether or not you use them you know, or you limit the snap counts, I think for this week you limit the snap counts, but at the same time you, you kind of stick him out there because you know he's going to draw the attention of the Steelers, which will open up Eifert, uh, who of course they didn't have in week two, and it will uh, help kind of get Tyler Boyd going as well because you pull off the best – he pulled the best defender off of uh, off of Boyd out there. Yeah, Matt, totally agree with you. You know, uh, the Bengals' playoff hopes, however faint they are, they have to win out. There's no there, there's no other way around it. With Miami winning uh, yesterday, there's no mathematical scenario where they win where they lose one of these remaining three games and still make it. So, I mean, if he is game ready, like you mentioned, Matt. You have to play him just for the exact same reasons you said. He draws so much attention. He's the he's the most important player in the franchise, mm-hmm. and you know, and that just frees up just so many more opportunities for Tyler Eifert. Uh, and we we know Steelers secondary isn't isn't anything to write home about, and you know Tyler Eifert can definitely take advantage. Well, that was my thing too. Is like, yeah, I'm all for him playing. Um, if he's able to play, obviously we all know that he's my guy. Um, but I'm also a little nervous. That it's going to be like, hey, AJ, welcome back. Mike Mitchell just hits him in the back of the head for the hell of it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Go Bobcats. <laughs> Man, I, I, I tell you, I'm pretty sure I told this story before, right? Like that he went to uh, my middle school and he transferred to like, or, like a high school around here and got their like state championships vacated because he used the wrong address. <laughs> No. Yeah. Wow. Remember, that would be because he's scum. Remember he was a second round draft pick? Like, so, like, the Raiders were like, is he fast? I guess so. Second round. His grade's fifth round. Second round. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's the same thing with TJ Carey from OU. Yeah. Um, Their safety now. They drafted him in the third round. And, like, Mike Mayock and uh, Mel Kuyper just like rummaging through their sheets to like find out who this guy is and the Raiders the Raiders just drafted him in the top 100 <laughs> I love the Raiders man like I'll never he, forget he was on, he was on what's that I said he was on like page 7 yeah. I'll never like, forget oh he's not uh, even on my sheet Mike yeah me either <laughs> I will never ever ever forget when they drafted Darius Hayward Bay because I was at the beat ups here watching it and I'm like oh this will be Michael Crabtree and I was like, what? <laughs> well, they ended up getting Crabtree anyway. Right. It worked out for the better. Absolutely. But yeah, guys, I mean, back to our previous conversation. Like, I'm stoked if AJ is going to be out there. If he's not, I understand too. I don't want AJ to turn into Ken Griffey Jr. and have hamstring problems the rest of his career. I'm not about that life. Once One, one run of that was enough. So, um,. Yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm hoping all for a all Adrian or Jeremiah to go out there and get some stuff. Which part taken of me care. really wants him to? Uh, what the forty yards, man? A selfish part of me really wants this. Yeah, I do too. It's really <laughs> selfish of me to say that. It is, but, but like, I, I, I mean, it's I, just forty. Right. Go out there and throw a deep bomb, and then just have him sit. Yeah. Now you're good. Yeah. See you next year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So let's talk. But about, he said, "Yeah, I, I didn't." Oh, sorry, see that. but he said he said even like week seventeen, if the Bengals are out of it, he still wants to play. So yeah, he said I'm gonna go do what I'm paid to do. You gotta respect that man. Yeah. Right. He's a baller. Yeah, he's a baller. So guys, that brings us to the infamous matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the second one of the year. Um. Teams look completely different than the first time they faced, obviously, like Shelby mentioned, aforementioned. Tyler Eifert's back on their end. Le'Veon Bell's back. Um, we've seen some emergences. I mean, we know Tyler Tyler Boyd had a huge game the first time these two played. Now he has become, like, their, you know, a huge part of the offense. Brandon LaFell has really stepped his game up there. Um, our offensive line's still terrible. Their defensive front seven's still pretty solid. James Harrison's still wrecking fools. Um, I like to think he learned that from his time in Cincinnati. Right, that's right, Mike Z. And uh, their secondary is still garbage. They're still the bootiest of booty. Um, they're going to have their kicker back. Our kicker still can't hit field goals from longer than, like, ever. 
And I don't know, man. Anything can happen in the Bengals Steelers game, but as happy as I am, this team has won a couple in a row, and I think they're playing well and they're clicking and things are going their way. I'm not so sure their playoff chances don't end this week. Yeah, and my biggest concern, obviously, is how hot the Steelers are. Right. Four game winning streak. And then last uh, yesterday against the Bills, a pretty good defense that, I mean, at least we thought. Mm-hmm. Le'Veon Bell goes for two something. Two ninety, I think, on, total. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying rushing. But two thirty eight, I think, rushing. I don't know if that's the exact number. And then you look at what the Bengals just gave up to Isaiah Crowell. Ten carries for 113 over 10 yards a carry to yeah. Isaiah Crowell and the winless Browns. And uh, you know, it just it's hard, hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel there and add in the Steelers always seem to pull out a victory when they come to Cincinnati. Ben Roethlisberger's never missed a game against the Bengals, even though he's always hurt. Just tough seeing this team pulling out a win. But hey, Matt, we got Vontez Burfick back for this game, and he's playing at the highest level I think he's ever played. The only question I have is what happened to him yesterday? One tackle. I don't I think know. they needed him to do much yesterday. Let's be honest here. No, yeah. I don't think he was doing enough that for everybody. Um, even even his uh, aforementioned eight yard on a second and two celebration. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it's called sugsing it. It's sugsing it. It's sugsing it. Sorry. Uh, TM. We just trademarked that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the one thing that, that this defense has is they have a much stronger uh, secondary. At least the Bengals do from when we saw in week two. Secondary was still finding itself, still struggling. Uh, we've we've seen that improve, uh, especially in the second half of the season. Vontez Burfix has woken up. Uh, I don't know what woke him up, but I'm glad they did. Uh, so, I, I mean, when you look at how this Bengals team, and, and this, especially this defense, is, is really playing right now at this high level, the key there is going to be getting to Ben Roethlisberger. And, and one thing that they've been doing fairly well in Pittsburgh is, of course, you know, short passes, quick releases, things like that. So collapsing the pocket, covering your guy, making sure it takes away, you know, make 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 Ben have to make a decision. And that's something that I think that's when Ben struggles is when you get him away from the game plan and have to make him think because, as we all know, Ben Roethlisberger doesn't think much. And, uh, oh, yeah, he's not good at it. No, it's yeah. okay. I mean, it – <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean he's a great quarterback, but you know he'll also he'll give you a few. Mm-hmm. Yes, he will. Yeah, he'll, and and you know I thought the Bengals secondary in the first matchup outside Darquez Denard getting burned twice for fifty yards by Sammy Coates. Yeah, both of those set up touchdowns. Uh, and then D'Angelo Williams was left wide open on a busted coverage in the goal line, caught a third touchdown. But before that, Drake or Patrick had a pick off Roethlisberger. Adam Jones had a pick off Roethlisberger in that game. That's yep. one of those games I look back at it and I say, you know, the Steelers took out A.J. Green from that game. There was no Tyler Eifert. Yep. But, you know, it was raining. The Bengals dropped about eight passes, I believe. Yep. I think Tyler Croft and C.J. Uzoma combined for five or six of those. Then there's the Uzoma and phantom touchdown. Boyd- yeah, Uzoma's almost touchdown. Would have been his only his only his first career one. He's still yet to get it. Tyler Boyd's controversial fumble and Jeremy Hill struggles against AFC North teams not named Cleveland. <laughs> I was you know, I say. think in this game the uh in this game the Bengals have to find a way to keep Roethlisberger on the sidelines and that's sustaining drives and that starts with the running game because you can't drop back to pass against the Steelers fifty times and expect to come out with a win and average less than two yards. A- carry like Hill has done the two weeks before Cleveland. Yeah. No, I agree. And but the one thing I think we, we've seen is we've seen the secondary eliminate those huge mistakes size, you know, open busted coverage and things like that. And that's really what what the secondary 
uh, has done in the second half of the season is, is clinch that up. And I think you hit the nail on the head offensively. They have to sustain drives. They have to keep their defense off the field, keep Ben Roethlisberger off the field. Um, and, and you got to stop Le'Veon Bell. But I think you can make the adjustment for Le'Veon Bell. Um, but the question there is, is if you make the adjustment for Le'Veon Bell, are you going to suffer your pass defense? And, and I, I think these guys have matured to a point in the secondary, especially Iloka. Uh, Williams showed a little bit last week as well uh, and some good decision-making that that says that they should be just fine. Yeah, I'm just nervous, though, because, you know, that first game, Carlos Dansby had a tough time covering D'Angelo Williams out of the backfield, mm-hmm. and there's not a linebacker in the NFL, let alone the Bengals team, that can cover Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield, Right. which we saw in 2014 when the Steelers came to Cincinnati and put up 42 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think 25 in the fourth quarter. Yep, I was uh, there. Yeah, yeah, 42 to 21. The Bengals were leading going into the fourth quarter because A.J. Green caught a deep ball for a touchdown on the last play of the third. Uh, but, you know, it. I, I don't think the pass rush uh, against RG3 was that well, but I think that was mostly letting him throw because he was, he was so inaccurate in that game. Mm-hmm. But they really got to turn up the heat on Big Ben uh, in this one. Yeah, well, don't worry. Any, any person that tackles uh, from the Bengals tackles Le'Veon Bell is out to hurt him and end his career. So yeah, you know right. that. <laughs> yeah, all that weed smoking makes him paranoid. Man. Well, he he brought it up in the Giants game too, saying that like I think all that weed he smokes makes him paranoid, man. Certainly not helping his rap career. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about that. So, yeah, and I mean you guys you guys definitely hit the points in the head there. And then of course there's like do you think this? Do you think like when the Bengals like get like stutter and like they got to go like it's a fourth get fourth down and they got to go kick a field goal? Do you think that like they're going to be like laughing on the Steelers sideline when Mike Nugent walks out? They're going to be like Like Chris Boswell's like drop back to me. <laughs> right. the ball. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I would not be surprised. Well, you know, with the last time, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, uh, well, I was just going to say the last time, the last time these two teams played, Nugent hit three red zone field goals, and the Bengals just could not convert down there. Right. Uh, their one touchdown was a twenty-five yard dump off to Geo, who, as we know, will not be in this game. Uh, so I think converting in the red zone, which the Bengals have been, uh, yeah, have done better since Eifert. the return of Tyler Eifert. Uh, but that, but that'll be another uh, big part of this game. But we we're all talking about this. But the biggest thing comes down to, or the biggest thing that it comes down to this week is that you have to click on all cylinders against the Steelers. Mm-hmm. You you got to sustain drives. You got to contain Roethlisberger. You got to contain Bell. You you got to limit chunk plays. You got to convert in the red zone. It all has to come together in one week to beat the Steelers. And it's just is the Bengals are the Bengals up to the task? Yeah. So, key players for me in this game, first and foremost, Draker Patrick, because you know he's going to draw all 84 on the other side. And we all know that last time the Bengals played Antonio Brown, they handled him very well. I know he had a couple drops, but, um, you know, I was really happy with how Adam Jones and company played him. Um, I think George Loke is going to play a lot of center field in this game. I think that, you know, he's going to be looking for that because we know the Steelers like to throw that deep ball. So, I think you're going to see Aloka and Williams playing a little center field in this game. So, I think that's going to play a part. Um Big care player for me on offense, shocker here, Tyler Boyd. I think that he wants to make up for that phantom fumble because he knows it's on the stat line, and I think he's going to go out and try to play a little better than he did his first time, which was a very good game, like Shelby mentioned. And most importantly, yep. it comes down to Stefan Tuitt, Cam Hayward, Ryan Shazier, James Harrison. Can you keep these guys off Andy Dalton for, you know? Hayward out for the year. Oh, yeah. Yep, Hayward. Here. So there's one. All right. So we got Tim off Dalton. Way to go, guys. Um, well, that was really mean. Ow. That was terrible of me. And, you know, if AJ Green is playing, we can't let Ross Cockrell hold him to one catch. Like, Ross Cockrell is not. No. No. Like, that That can't happen. So, uh, but all those things being said, I fully expect on the other end that Le'Veon Bell will hit the century mark. I expect Big Ben to throw for 320. I expect Antonio Brown to get in the end zone. And I expect Ladarius Green to have a big day because we know Steelers tight ends against the Bengals. So, 
I want to say the Bengals win this one. I'm shocked the spread's only three. But unfortunately, yeah. I, I think the Steelers win this one. I just think that there's going to be too much. They're too hot right now. I just don't want it to – I mean, would it shock me if the Bengals won this game? Not in the least bit because that would just be amazing. But I just feel like everything going in Pittsburgh's way. And the only way it's going to happen is if Ben Roethlisberger gets hurt and Landry Jones has got to play this game. Yeah, and, you know, Steelers fans travel well. You know there's going to be a lot of terrible towels at PBS on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah, you brought up a good point with the tight ends. In that first game, Xavier Krimble uh, caught a touchdown pass. Jesse James caught a touchdown pass. And D'Angelo Williams caught a touchdown pass. So no receiver had scored for the Pittsburgh, but, you know, it was those other guys. And, you know, I don't – The Bengals lack game, uh, Jesse James, and then add Le'Veon Bell. I, I see I see Le'Veon Bell having seven or eight catches. Honestly, I I think he'll probably run for around seventy yards, but all purpose, uh, probably in the one hundred and fifty range. No, I, I that's that's a great point. I think they'll handle Antonio Brown, but it's the other guys you got to worry about. Um, granted, on the road, uh, Sammy Coates is terrible. Um, he's dropped. Half of, or he's dropped most of his passes. Uh, if you look at uh, if you look at Green, he's good. I don't think he's what Pittsburgh expected. Uh, again, they've been told by by Heath Miller. Uh, I mean, Heath was one of the best in terms of blocking and catching. Um, Green is very one sided on that, and even then, he still has had some drop troubles too. Uh, so it really does come down to the guys in the backfield. And, and Le'Veon Bell, I hate saying it because he's a stealer, but in all honesty, he's one of the best in the game at, at you know at, at mixing things up and, and doing his job. And, and that's something that you know again, I think the uh, the Bengals can account for him in the run game. And it's just a matter of can can somebody anybody account for him or D'Angelo Williams out of the backfield in a passing situation? And and that's that's where. You know, things get a little bit sketchy in terms of whether or not the Bengals can do it. And so that's really going to be the difficult part. I, I think without Cam Hayward, because um, you either look at Cam Hayward or James Harrison really being the uh, defensive leaders in the pass rush, and, and without one, you know, granted James Harrison stepped out majorly from that, but you still lose a, a piece of that. And it seems like at least the Bengals' protection has been better. It hasn't been great, but it's been better from what it was week one, week two, week three. And, and so it, if they can find a way to at least do better and, and not go back to what we saw in week one and week two, uh, I, I think they still have a little bit of a difficulty getting pressure on Dalton. Dalton will have a little bit more time to throw than he did in week two. Yeah. So overall, I guess we got to start the scoring prediction here. Um I think the Bengals will be able to hang, but I think Pittsburgh is going to pull away in the end, like I said. Uh, I think Steelers will end up winning this game about 27-17. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with like Steelers 28-20, 28-23. Got to factor in Nugent's misses. Mm-hmm. That's just a weekly thing. Uh, I think in order for the Bengals to win, they got to have like a, like a huge defensive play, like a pick six or a fumble recovery. Or a big punt return by Alex Erickson, uh, something like that along along those lines uh, to pull off what is surprisingly not much of an upset when you look at the three point spread. But uh, I just don't think the Bengals have the manpower to match the Steelers on offense, and it winds up in the Steelers' favor. One thing we haven't seen from the Bengals much this year is Bengals playing four quarters worth of football. That's what it's going to take to beat the Steelers. Uh, Steelers do pull this one out. I'm hoping our curse stays true. Uh, and, and when we all pick, the team that we pick ends up sucking. Uh, but I'm going Steelers 24-17. Oh, man. We're like... This is like the opposite of a Bengals show. We're like anti bengal show right now. Like, what are we doing? We're realistic, though. We are. That, that's the Painfully di- realistic. Painfully realistic. But then again... What did we say about what did we say before the show about our curse? We uh, teams suck when we all pick them. Well, that's where Shelby comes in this week, pal. 
That is where Shelby comes in this week. We're terrible segue. <laughs> was that All like, right. was that your like evil maniacal laugh? That that was <laughs> um, that was hysterical gone nuts laugh. All right, is it time for lightning round? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, so we all picked the Steelers to beat the Bengals, unfortunately, so let's hope that curse that Matt mentioned uh, holds true. Uh, Thursday night, uh, football comes back again in Week 15, and two teams that had awful games yesterday. The Rams, who just fired Jeff Fisher, <laughs> after, finally. Eight days after an extension. Yeah. Uh, traveled to the 12th man to take on the Seahawks, who were obliterated by the Packers and Aaron Rodgers yesterday at Lambeau. Uh, who do you guys have? Start with Tim. So, I know Russell Wilson threw five picks yesterday. And remember when people said that they would rather have him than Aaron Rodgers for a while? <laughs> yeah. That's wrong. Um, but <laughs> the Rams are terrible. They're God terrible. They're super terrible. Oh, my God, they're terrible. Seahawks win. Didn't the Rams win this first matchup against... The Rams always to- beat the Seahawks at home. 9-6. to six. Uh, But it's with the 12th man. That's the difference there. I'm yeah. going Seahawks, but I'm not going by anywhere near much. I still think it's going to be like a, a odd score yeah, to like 12. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the Seahawks secondary because they lost Earl Thomas... But, you know, they were facing Aaron Rodgers. So I think they get back on track this week against Jared Goff, and he struggles with that limited cast he has. Todd Gurley said the Rams' offense was a middle school offense, and he's absolutely right. I think the Seahawks win this game with a couple defensive touchdowns uh, to go along with a few offensive scores, too, like 28-10. to 10. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we all picked the Seahawks to win at home. And actually, our first Saturday game uh, – is this week, and it's the Miami Dolphins who got a big win against Arizona but lost Ryan Tannehill, at least for this week, uh, traveling to the Jets, who actually came back from down 14 to beat the 49ers. Not much to give credit to there uh, in overtime. Uh, that game is in uh, New Jersey where the Jets play, East Rutherford. Uh, who do you guys have? Um, Man. Bryce Petty versus Matt Moore. Don't kick down the uh, – don't knock anyone over getting to the couch for that one. I'll take the Dolphins. Um, yeah, I'm taking the Dal- Dolphins just because they actually have a running game. Um, although Bilal Powell was ridiculous. I, you know, I, and I should be rooting for him since I have him in fantasy. Um, and he's the reason I'm going to be in the semifinals, Tim. Uh our conversation on Twitter earlier. Um, <laughs> so, needless to say, uh, you know what? I- I'm going to I'm gonna switch. I'm going to go Jets in this one just because I think Bilal Powell ha- has a decent chance of doing well in this game. I was going to go with the Jets, too. Uh, just because Matt Moore, not sure what you're going to get from him. Um Jay Ajayi has actually struggled the last two weeks. Uh, didn't break 60 yards against the 49ers, who Bilal Powell just went off against. And then he only had, I think, 50-something against the Cardinals. Uh, but I'm going to take the Jets at home on prime time. Uh, and, you know, the Bengals definitely need it because uh, Dolphins' win officially eliminates them from a wild card spot, as faint chance that is. <laughs> okay, and to the 1 o'clock games on Sunday, the winless Browns. Now led by RG3, the Bengals just beat. Go to Buffalo to face the Bills, another team who is reeling right now. Who do you have? Start with Tim. Buffalo. This is in Buffalo? Yeah. You know, it would be it would be great just because it would kind of be a middle finger to the Cleveland Browns fans for the Browns to win on the road for the one game that they may win this season. So I'm going Browns. Right. Really? Yeah, um, you saw what Jeremy Hill just did against the Browns, and I think LaShawn McCoy in what will probably be a, probably be, probably be a snowy day again uh, in Buffalo uh, has a big game, and it's one of those games where Tyrod Taylor only has to throw like 18 times for 119 yards and uh, gets the win. Sammy Watkins had a pretty good uh, game against Pittsburgh. I think the Bills win that game. 
you, did you hear my reasoning though? Why Shelby? He's picking the Browns because it would be funny. I, I think it'd be funny if the Browns won their only game this season on the road, being a middle finger to the Browns fans. <laughs> That's the okay, only. Now, I'm picking the Browns. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. No. No offensive game plan or anything. Just no. uh, it would be a middle <laughs> finger. All right. Now we uh, another game in East Rutherford. The uh, Lions, who got a come from behind win over the Bears yesterday, take on the Giants, who are the only team to defeat the Cowboys this season. Uh, who do you guys have in a big NFC game with a lot of playoff implications? I like the Giants, man. I think that you know the money they spent on their defense is really coming together. Uh, offense is really coming through, even with the lack of a run game. Let's not forget, man, a big, board, a big name that stood out in yesterday's game against the Cowboys, Romeo Aquora. You're going to know that name for a while now. Can you say that five times fast, Tim? Romeo Aquora, Romeo Aquora, Romeo Aquora, Romeo Aquora, Romeo Aquora. I think he didn't finish those a couple of times. You know why I know that name? Because he went to Notre Dame. I know. I just had oh, to God. pick up. I'm going Giants, too. Yeah, I like the Giants in this one. We're still questionable about Matthew Stafford's finger issue with the gloves. Uh, wish the Giants defense showed up against the Steelers like they did against the Cowboys last night. Right. But uh, Janoris Jenkins has been outstanding. Uh, he'll see a lot of Marvin Jones, the former Bengal, on Sunday. But I like the Giants, and maybe Eli Manning can bounce back from an awful game last night. So have fun. All right, guys. What's that, Matt? I said, so have fun winning Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. AFC North uh, team, Baltimore Ravens, who played a night against the Patriots. They're at 7-5 and five currently. Um, we'll take on an Eagles team that has – fallen quite a bit since starting 3-0. Uh, they just lost at home in a close game to Washington yesterday, and now they travel to Baltimore to take on Joe Flacco and the Ravens. Matt, start with you. Just because I don't want the Ravens to win, because that's another way the Bengals start completely, totally out of the playoffs. I'm going Eagles. Man, the last time I saw some Eagles fall this hard, they had broken wings. Oh! I'm going with the Ravens. Uh, I'm going to go with the Eagles just because I think it's uh, that it'll be low scoring and there's going to be a turnover somewhere. Joe Flacco and Carson Wentz who are capable of turning the ball over quite a few times. Uh, but I'm just going to go with the Eagles because I don't like the Ravens. All right, we already picked the Bengals Steelers and now a uh, matchup interconference. Uh, or non-conference, I should say, uh, with the Colts, who lost on a terrible fourth and one call against the Texans yesterday, uh, taking on the Vikings, who got a win in Jacksonville. This game is in Minnesota. Andrew Luck versus Sam Bradford. Tim. I think you just narrowed it all down right then and there. And I know last week I said Brock Eisler versus Andrew Luck. I trust Andrew Luck. But I will definitely trust Andrew Luck this week. I like the Colts on the road. To somehow just keep that little chance alive of making of winning the AFC South. Um, yeah. Well, uh, there's one well, thing. School, school, school. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm related to uh, Vikings fans, but that has nothing to do with it. It's Mike Zimmer's defense. Still, um, they have no offense. We know they have no offense, but at the same time. That's how they continue to stay in games for some odd reason is their defense. Um, I, I think the Colts always seem to struggle against defenses, even with Andrew Luck. Sorry, Tim. Um, I'm going Vikings. I'm not going Skull because I am not confident in that at all. I'm confident with the Vikings this week, and it's really just because the Vikings may have no offense, but the Colts don't really have a defense either. Um <laughs> And, you know, Andrew Luck had three turnovers yesterday. It really hurt the Colts. And uh, playing in Minnesota, the Vikings are in their element. Uh, get the home crowd behind them. I'm going to go with them. School! Uh, school! Um, school. Uh, <laughs> NFC North matchup. Uh, the surging Packers already 1-0 against the Bears this, this year on a Thursday night game. Uh, now they travel to Soldier Field to take on the Bears. And Mr. Matt Barkley, who's actually playing pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, who do you guys have? We'll start with Tim. Guys, remember what I said that Aaron Rodgers is the bad, bad man? And the bad, bad man said, said it. 
after Monday Night Football's victory against the Eagles, that he believed that the Green Bay Packers could run the show, run the table, and people laughed. But Aaron Rodgers did not. And since he said that, they have ran the table, and they're going to continue to run the table this week. The bad, bad man is going to throw for 380 yards and some touchdowns this week. What, what did I say last week when you guys were all high on the Seahawks? It's still Aaron freaking Rodgers. Well, it's still. I thought you said Skull. Yeah. I did say Skull. But that was Yeah, for you me. said Skull because you were making soup. You said I was Skull. making soup. <laughs> I'll I probably make soup again this week. Who knows? Uh, but this time it may be from scratch since I have a little more time. Uh, I'm going. Uh, I'm going a little bit of a, a Aaron Rodgers again this week because it is still Aaron freaking Rodgers. Yeah, the Bears don't have much to play for. The Packers are the hotter team. I'm going to go with Green Bay. And now, guys, another two teams that uh, got big wins last week. The Tennessee Titans knocked off the defending Super Bowl champion Broncos. They travel to Arrowhead to face probably the most, maybe the hottest team in the NFL right now in the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, I just really like Kansas City at home, no matter the opponent. Same here, man. I just think they're too much. Even days when Spencer Ware doesn't do anything, they're still winning games. Um, it does suck. That they are now without Derek Johnson with his injury, but even so, I don't think it's going to matter. Chiefs are just too much, man. And as much as I like what the, what the Titans are doing, I just have this feeling that Marcus Peters is going to get one on Marcus Mariota. Yeah. No faith in DeMarco Murray. Come on, Tim. You know, one one week you have all the faith in the world. This week you don't. I, I'm, I'm disappointed in you. Then again, well, the Chiefs the Chiefs defense is better against the run than Denver. Yeah. But, but then again, and it's I in Arrowhead. Did kind of not pick the Titans, so yeah, I, I double edged sword there. Uh, I am going to pick the Titans this week. I just like the running game a little bit more uh, on the Titans side. And my wife's really mad at me. I didn't pick them last week. Yeah, my wife, no, my wife actually was surprised that they even beat Denver. Uh, she thought at, at a ten nothing. Uh, 10 nothing score, at one, or what was it, 13 nothing score, I think it was, at one point, yeah. that uh, the Broncos were going to come back and absolutely obliterate them in the second half, and they didn't, um, which I was kind of a little bit shocked on, but then again, it still is the Broncos, it still is Trevor Simeon, so uh, I shouldn't be too shocked. But I, I think this week, uh, Titans find some way, just because, again, they're still in the hunt for the AFC South. They're right there with the Houston Texans, so... They, they've got to continue to win if they want to still be in the hunt. Yeah, Tyreek Hill is such an X factor for me. You don't know how he's going to show up. He does so many different things, mm -hmm. and that's why I like the Chiefs. Um, now, speaking of the Texans, they're at home to face the Jaguars, who just can't seem to catch a break. Blake Bortles actually didn't throw an interception against Minnesota. I was surprised. I know. But uh, I got Lamar Miller going off again. You know, Brock Osweiler was 14 of 24 for one 19 something like that and a pick against the Colts barely didn't do anything still got a road win and now they come home and face the Jaguars who they've already beaten this season I think Lamar Miller has a great game in the Texans role Will Fuller will have a nice long touchdown this game because god the Jaguars corners are so slow Texans will win Texans at home it's hard to root against them it's not hard to root for the Drew Brees playing a, away from the Dome. And he's thrown six picks, no touchdowns. Tim, I saw your tweet. Um, really concerning me since I had a bye week in our fantasy playoffs, and now I'm playing in the semifinal with Drew Brees as my number one quarterback. Uh, him and the Saints go to Arizona to face the Cardinals. And, you know, I love me some David Johnson, and I think he leads the Cardinals to a win uh, as well with that secondary uh, picking off Breeze a few times. Well, we sure as hell know it won't be Carson Palmer leading them to a victory. So someone's got to do yeah. it, and it will be David Johnson. Uh, oh, it won't be Michael Floyd either. Oh, well, yeah. yeah that's right. Mike, Michael Floyd's out too. Which bodes well for Larry Fitzgerald, who uh, had one catch for one yard, uh, in that I should keep him in over Stefan Diggs last week. Uh, so, yeah. Hard because you don't know which quarterback will basically be worse outside of uh, 
New Orleans, and that's whether it's going to be Drew Brees or Carson Palmer. I'm going to go Drew Brees in this one. I think Brees just needs some kind of belief in him, I guess. Uh, I, I just don't think David Johnson can do everything, and Carson Palmer obviously can't do anything, so uh, I'm going Saints. David Johnson's got 15 straight games with over 100 all-purpose yards. So, I mean, no, no matter how bad Palmer's been, it's, uh, David Johnson's been picking up the slack all right. season. But I, and, I, and he's especially at home, too. Uh, I just, with Drew Brees struggling the way he is, uh, and the Cardinals' secondary being pretty good, I uh, think it makes for a Cardinals win. Uh, next, uh, in Atlanta, the San Francisco 49ers really want that number one pick because they had a 14-point second-half lead against the Jets. They blew it. Uh, they've now lost every game since the opener. They beat the Rams on Monday Night Football. Uh, they still have, they're still still one game back of the Browns for the number one pick, and they lose again when they travel to Atlanta to take on Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Yeah, it's not even going to be close. Julio or no Julio, Atlanta's going to dominate. Yeah, um, Atlanta just absolutely dominated last week without Julio. They're going to do it again this week. Okay. And we all concur on that pick. And now to the another late game. It is the Patriots going to Denver where the Broncos play three very good teams, New England, Kansas City, Oakland, in that order to finish off the season. Uh, taking on the Patriots, I think LeGarrette Blunt has a big game in this one. And the Patriots run the ball down the Broncos throw just like the Titans did, and they get a win at mile high. You guys know what I'm going to say, right? Unicorn it's something, Tom Brady. It's the greatest. He's going to yeah. continue to be the greatest this week. Uh, for some odd reason, Broncos past few years have had uh, the, the Patriots number, but I think that ends here. Uh because, yeah, their offense still is led by Trevor Simeon. And um, to take a page from Mr. Tim Daniel, and uh, that is Tom Brady is one of the okay. greatest to play of the game. I hate saying it because I hate the Patriots. The greatest. Patriots. Yeah, he is the greatest. One of the greatest. The greatest. If Andy Dalton didn't exist, Tom Brady would be the best quarterback. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the last the last of the late afternoon games the Oakland Raiders after the loss last Thursday to the Chiefs uh, they go to San Diego where the Chargers are just turning the ball over at will they lost bad to the Panthers yesterday and I got the Raiders getting back on track in this one with a lot of points being put up yeah same here I just think that I like what San Diego's done with their young talent uh, key word there being their young talent and Melvin Gordon not being active in this game. I know they're saying day by day, but I'll be shocked if he's on the field. Um, I right. love this Raider team, man. I like these young California teams like them and the Lakers who are just making crazy things happen. And Derek Derek Carr is going to continue to make big things happen with his wide receiver crew because without the without the secondary, with all the injuries the Chargers secondary has had, they don't have anyone that can cover Cooper and Crabtree. Yeah, Crabtree has kind of been the X factor this year for the Raiders. Raiders still roll. Uh, I've been disappointed in the past couple weeks from Amari Cooper because for some odd reason he almost has fallen off the face of the earth just a little bit. Uh, he gets back on track as well, I think, in this game, and uh, Oakland rolls. Okay, the original time slot for the Bengals-Steelers game was replaced by a more attractive matchup, and it is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Winners of five straight, I believe. Yep. Uh, they will travel. They will travel to Dallas to take on the Cowboys, who were had their 11 game winning streak broken uh, last night against the Giants. Uh, Tim, who do you have in this one? A, a very good game. I'm, I'm I'm really excited to watch this one. I am stoked for this game, Shelby. But until Doug Martin gets it going, they're not right. beating the Cowboys. I I mean I love what Tampa Bay's done. They've had a hell of a year. They definitely deserve to be where they're at. I love Jameis Winston, Mike Evans. But Doug Martin, I understand he's been hurt. He just hasn't been the same player. And I think that's going to really hurt Tampa Bay in big games like this. I think the talent gap's just too much. Zeke's going to have another big day. He had one yesterday even in the loss. Dak Prescott may not have another huge game this year because of the teams they play. But he's going to do enough for them to win. 
No faith in Mike Evans this week, Tim. That's a shocker. I think he'll have a big day because I don't think Orlando. I only guys like Scandrick can cover him, but I just. Other than that, man, what else are they going to do? Is Cameron Brake going to go off? Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, no, I agree with you. I, I, I think Dallas has everything going uh, going for them in this game. They're coming off a loss, determined to get back on track. Uh, Dax, uh, even though uh, Jerry Jones has come out and said that he has faith in Dak Prescott and he's going to continue with him, I think Dak Prescott still wants to prove that he is the quarterback in Dallas. And uh, I, I think Dallas has a, has a good game, and uh, Dallas pulls it out. Yeah, Keyshawn Johnson ain't walking through those doors. Um, For the Cowboys or the Bucks, You know. Ne- neither is Warren Sapp's at defense. Right. Uh, Buccaneers' defense looked amazing, though, against the Saints. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the Cowboys, you know, their defense has been amazing this year. Mm-hmm. And it's been underrated because of how much attention Prescott and uh, Zeke have gotten. Uh, last night they spoiled a really good uh, game plan by Rob Marinelli. Uh, you had the one touchdown to Odell Beckham. That was the Giants' most successful play, and it proved to be the difference. Um, and now I think they return home, and like you guys said, they just kind of get back on track. I think uh, Ezekiel Elliott, you know, 108 yards, something like that around there, what he had yesterday, that was like a bad game for him. So right. uh, I think the Cowboys have get back on track and uh you know prescott finally finds his groove but but i think you know some teams are starting to get a little bit more tape on dak prescott Mm -hmm. and as we've seen in the last couple weeks and now finally our last game guys uh the carolina panthers have been so up and down they got blown out by seattle uh, the cam newton tie gate um and then came back home and Put a put a pretty whooping on the Chargers. Uh, now they have to travel to Washington, who just got a big win over Philadelphia. Close game uh, in Philly. Um, I like Washington at home, and I like Kirk Cousins to dismantle this uh, Carolina secondary. I like Deshaun Jackson in this game, man. I just with how bad the Carolina secondary has been in the ups and downs. I just think he's gonna have one of those crazy Deshaun Jackson plays where Kirk Cousins goes deep, and there he is by himself in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Cam Hayward, or Cam Hayward, wow. <laughs> Cam Newton last Aaron week. Donald. <laughs> Aaron Donald. Tyler Eifert. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, <laughs> Zeke. Um, Skull. Cam Newton was probably the second worst, or well, actually I should say the worst quarterback even last week in the win. Um, he just did absolutely nothing. One touchdown, one interception. Had under 200 yards, just was lifted up by a team that all around him was so much better. Um, I, I just think that they would need a much better performance from Cam Newton if they even want a shot at winning this game. I think Washington rolls. And folks, there you have it for this week's edition of Men in Stripes, brought to you by StripePipe.com. Dear God, let's hope the Bengals beat the Steelers so we can holiday celebrate it up. That that would be the best Christmas gift ever. That yeah. that would be that that would be better than having like the hottest supermodel laying under your tree at Christmas. We'll see about that. All right, guys, have a good <laughs> one. It'll be an early week. Uh, we'll see what we can do next week with Christmas Eve. But who day? Who day? <laughs>